Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in a private space cruiser heading toward Jupiter when suddenly... It's a cosmic torpedo right off our port side. Who could be firing at us? I don't know, but he's within range. The next blast will get us sure. He hit us that time, sir. The power's gone. That's not all. Half the hull's punctured. We're losing all our air. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Treachery in Outer Space. Say, what kind of a jet jalopy are we riding in anyhow, Captain Tufel? We'll never get to Terra City at this rate. I know what's the matter. This surface car's just got ordinary fuel in it. Well, we'll drive it to this filling station here and fill her up with super fuel. Let's try her now. Wow, this jet car is supercharged now. Sure thing, there's super fuel in it. And gang, there's a little lesson in this for you. Ordinary fuel for breakfast, you're just a putt-putt. Super fuel for breakfast, you're supercharged. The gang, my advice is eat the super fuel Buzz Corey has in the morning. I mean wheat checks and rice checks, the super cereals that help the supercharge you. Real swell tasting, and they both have that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. So don't be a putt-putt. Eat the delicious super cereals that help to supercharge you. Rice checks and wheat checks. And remember, inside the package, there's a mysterious magic space picture. And now, today's space patrol adventure, treachery in outer space. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy and their space battle cruiser Terra 5 are headed toward Jupiter, where Buzz is to hold a conference with the governor of that giant planet. But they've just received the message concerning a wanted bandit ship reported in the area. And Buzz has changed vector to head toward Jupiter's third moon. There's no sign of another ship in the viewscope, Commander. Maybe the pilot of that Saturn patrol ship was mistaken. The ship he was chasing may have already landed on Jupiter's third moon. Then it's going to take us a long time to locate it, sir. Number three isn't a very big moon, but it's still got a lot of surface. More area than we have time to search right now, even for a million credits worth of amplifron. But, sir, if we're not going to search for this ship, why are we going to the third moon? I'm going to pay a visit to the Gold Star Express spaceport. It's the one spaceport on number three moon where they don't ask many questions. You didn't say it was a small cargo job? But that's all. There are dozens of small cargo ships shuttling between Jupiter's 12 moons and the Saturn's moons, for that matter. The Gold Star Express operates three or four. Not a very big outfit. No, but you get a lot of revenue by repairing ships owned by even smaller operators. The working ship isn't always a very high standard, you remember. Yeah, that's what Gold Star got in trouble about last year. Of course, Rex Scranner may have learned his lesson. We'll have a talk with him, and then we'll blast off at Jupiter City. All unloaded. Oh, Mr. Scranner, I've been calling all over the spaceport trying to find you. Yeah, yard foreman told me. What's the trouble? Slate Rackman is out to get you. <laughs> I'm not surprised after that neat double cross my boys just pulled on him. We're in the big time now, Loring. We're as big as Rackman himself. No, we will be after we dispose of that amplifier. Yeah, but what about Rackman? I outsmarted him once, I can do it again. Another deal. Let him plan the whole robbery, how to get the crates of Amplitron out of the Saturn warehouse. Then we step in a day early and do it ourselves. So we don't have to split them. Now stop worrying and see that my ship's ready. I want to blast off of Venus in an hour. You can't blast off. What do you mean I can't blast off? Got to make arrangements to dispose of the Amplitron. It's just what Rackman's waiting for. He's going to blow your ship to bits. You sure this morning? Ask Broder. He overheard a couple of Rackman's men talking about it in that... That Saturn City hangout of theirs. Well, he's not going to bluff Rex Scranner. 
and blasting off of Venus on schedule. But, Mr. Scranner, you know that cruiser of his. He's got weapons on it that could fight off a space patrol squadron. Who wouldn't stand a chance? Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Gold Star Express, Jupiter Moon number 3. Commander Corey? Commander Corey calling Gold Star Express, Spaceport. I'll talk to him. Gold Star Spaceport to Commander Corey. Rex Scranner here. Mr. Scranner, I'm five minutes out of moon number three. I want to land at your port and talk to you. Why, certainly, Commander. What about? I'll explain when I get there. I need your cooperation. Of course. I'll have the space lock cleared for you. Fine. Hurry out. Why do you suppose he's coming here? Well, he must suspect something about the Amplitron. If it was a regular Saturn to Jupiter patrol ship, I'd say you were right. But Corey wouldn't be here so soon after the robbery. I suppose he starts looking around. He won't find anything. Well, hide the Apatron cases underground. He'll spray the rocket exhaust of the ship that brought it in with liquid air. He'll be as cold as if the ship hadn't been spaceborne for two days. Get the clue on that right away. Yes, Mr. Stern. Say, why can't we get Corey to go after Rackman? After all, Rackman threatened your life. Corey would want to know why. Wouldn't be smart to tell him. Well, but maybe we could work it you know, something like this. Tell Corey that you want to make up for that jam you were in last year and, and tip him off about some crime Rackman for it. You'd get Rackman out of the way. But he might suspect you informed on him. I'd still have Rackman's gang to contend with. There must be some way you can use him. Wait a minute, I've got it. Instead of getting Corey to go after Rackman, we get Rackman to go after Corey. Now listen. Before he lands, I'll bring him in here. You have one. I'm sorry, Commander. Your ship's the only one to come into our Gold Star spaceport in the last 16 hours. Business has been pretty slack. Well, has any ship requested landing permission and then canceled within the last few hours? No. No, I've been here all the time myself. I'd know about such a call. Happy, you checked over those ships in the repair hangars. What do you think? Well, two of them were small cargo jobs, but by the looks of them, they've been there for days. The rocket exhausts aren't even warm. I see. And as I promised you, Commander, I'll notify the Space Patrol Jupiter whenever a ship does come in, for any reason at all. Fine, Mr. Scranner. What was that? Came from the direction of our ship. Come on. It sounded like the whole atmosphere dome collapsed. Hey, smoke and rockets, Commander, look. Somebody backed a truck into our ship. Well, worse than that, he rammed a metal beam right through the hull. Uh, that clumsy ox. I'm going out there and... You tell your driver to pull the truck straight ahead now. I think the endurium beam will pull out without causing any more damage. You heard the commander, Mr. Loring. Tell that driver to move that truck. Yes, Mr. Scranner. All right, Davis, move it. Forward this time. All right, clear. Well, the next thing is to get it repaired. Commander, I hold myself personally responsible for this inexcusable accident. My company will repair the dam. All right, Mr. Spanner. But that's wait till Happy comes out of the ship. Maybe you don't have the men and the equipment. Some delicate wiring is affected. Who couldn't have backed his truck into that old cargo hulk? No, no. He's got to pick the flagship of the commander in chief of the space patrol. Well, that could have been worse. The driver didn't do it intentionally. He's very gracious about it, Commander. And since he insists, I won't fire the man. Doesn't look so good, Commander. I mean, as far as a quick blast off's concerned. What's the damage? Well, right? outer and inner hulls are pierced, the power cable broken, emergency air supply conduit snapped in two. Nothing really difficult to repair, but well, it'll take some time. Three hours, anyway. Now, my men will get on it right away. I'll have them drop everything else. Three hours? That'll make me late for my appointment at Jupiter City. Well, we could space it in for a patrol ship to come and get us. Why don't you take my private cruiser over there? It's quite fast. I'm sure you'd have no trouble operating. Won't you be needing your ship? No, not until tomorrow. By then, your ship will be ready. Well, if you're sure it's not an inconvenience, I'll take you up on it. Excellent. That makes me feel a lot better. And if you don't mind, we'll blast off right away. The ship's all ready. Good. Hap, let's get some of our gear out of Terra 5. Right, sir. It worked, Mr. Scranner. <laughs> well, Loring, let's see if Rackman will carry out his threat to blast my ship to bits. <laughs> don't worry, Chief. Don't worry, Loring. Bad little ship, Commander. It's 
Brander keeps it in pretty good shape. Yes, but I don't care much about using a civilian ship for official business. You know, I honestly think Scranner would have been offended if he had refused. Still, if it wasn't such an urgent appointment with the governor, I'd have waited for one of our patrol ships. Well, we ought to get to Jupiter City right on the nose, sir. Wow, what was that? Cosmic torpedo right off our port side. Cosmic torpedo? I'll take the controls, Happy. Put on the rear view scope. Yes, sir. One of our patrol ships must be firing at us. Without a space phone challenge? Maybe Scranner's space phone receiver's out of order. It seems all right. The meter's checked. Wow. That was too close. It rocked the ship. Commander, look in the view scope. It's another private cruiser, and it's closing in. Happy, go to the locker, get a couple of spacesuits. If our hull gets punctured, we'll still have a chance. All right, Commander. I'll try to find out what this space pirate wants. Private cruiser J3587, calling private cruiser S642. Hold your fire. Hurry with the suits. Cruiser S642, hold your fire. This is Commander Corey of the Space Patrol and cruiser J3587. What do you think you're fooling, Stranner? You're not fooling. This is not Stranner. It's Stranner's ship, but this is Commander Corey. Who are you? Yes, well, I'm the Secretary General. <laughs> Who are you? Stop firing those torpedoes and answer me. Nice try, Stranner. That's Commander Corey gag, I mean. But you can only fool space, strength, and one. Happy! Knock the power out. Hurry with those spacesuits. He's blasting the ship to pieces. We're losing air! We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Hey, watch it. Hold everything. Here he comes. And he's running right this way. Wow! That's a boy here in the neighborhood gang, and he's always supercharged. Eats rice checks and wheat checks. That's why they're the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Uh-oh. He's running right in this direction again. I better get out of the way fast. Man, that boy has the speed of Buzz Corey himself. Well, gang, how about it? How about getting supercharged so you can whiz along just like that? Here's all you do. Have a good power breakfast with Rice Checks or Wheat Checks, the delicious bite-sized super cereals. They help to turn on your starter, help to make you bright as a light, help to keep you right on the beam. So don't wait. Get Rice Checks and Wheat Checks today, the swell-tasting super cereals that help to supercharge you. And remember, inside of every Rice Checks and Wheat Checks package, there's a mysterious magic space picture. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, Treachery in Outer Space. Slake Rackman is blasting Rex Scranner's spaceship, believing his double-crossing partner is inside it. Actually, Scranner has plotted so that Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the ship. Plus, Scranner figures he's saving his own life and at the same time eliminating Buzz Corey. At this moment, Buzz and Happy are in the badly battered private space cruiser trying to get into spacesuits as their air pressure rushes through twisted hull plates into outer space. Into the airlock. Quickly, Happy. I can't breathe. We can put on our spacesuits in there. Hurry, Happy. Yes, sir. There's no air in the lock either. But escape him. We open the hatch. I'll turn the valve up. Oh, that's better. Get your suit on quickly, Happy. Are we going to jump out of the ship, sir? Yeah, not if that cruiser stops firing at us. Oh, what did he say his name was, sir? Rackman. He's after Scranner. Isn't he ever going to stop? He's going to be sure no one's left alive in this ship. I've got my suit on, sir. I'm ready to leave the airlock any time you are. Close your helmet faceplate and we'll go back into the control section. Ready, Commander. Back with the inner hatch. Wow, what a mess. If we stayed in the control section, it would have been finished for sure. Rackman sent a torpedo right through here. Where is he now? The view scope's erect. Look through the nose port. See that streak of flame? Hey, he's leaving us. Because he figures he's finished Scranner. Commander, it's sure lucky you thought of these spacesuits when you didn't put that big hole in the ship. We'd be finished by now. We'll call Jupiter Space Patrol and have them send the ship after us. But the space phone is knocked out. We'll use the ones in our suits and hope they'll reach Jupiter. Just hope Rackman doesn't come back. Say, why do you suppose he's so anxious to do away with Scranner? That's just what I've been wondering, Happy. First, we've got to find out who Rackman is. Then we may have it. Scranner's sure lucky he wasn't aboard. I'll bet he wouldn't have thought of the spacesuits until it was too late. For the time being, we'll keep this little incident a secret within the space patrol. We won't release any public reports. Let this Rackman assume he got rid of Scranner. Then we'll watch for his next move. I see what you mean, sir. If he found out it actually was you and Scranner's ship, he'd go into hiding, but quick. Our next move is to reach Jupiter. Emergency call to space patrol Jupiter. Commander Corey and damaged private cruiser off Uh, 
Well, Loring, I'd say Corey's had plenty of time to reach Jupiter City. <laughs> Should we check to see if he's arrived yet? Just to be sure? Yeah. We'll notify Jupiter City Space Patrol that the commander's ship has been repaired, that it can be picked up any time. It's convenient. That'll show the Space Patrol that we're very cooperative. <laughs> then maybe they'll let us know if something happened to Corey. What do you mean, if? What chance would Corey have in your ship against Rackman's armored job? Right. Well, while I call Jupiter Space Patrol, you give the boys orders to start loading those crates of Ampatron. I'll take them to Venus right away. But suppose a space patrol comes to pick up Corey's ship while we're loading. What if they do? Are they going to suspect us of loading stolen goods right in front of them? Yeah. I guess you're right. They're sitting pretty, Loring. Rackman got rid of Corey for us. And when he finds out it was Corey and not me, he'll go into hiding. <laughs> he won't dare show his face anywhere. What are the men to load the amplifier? I'll call you to space. Space Patrol Jupiter calling Commander Corey. Space Patrol Jupiter calling Commander Corey. Corey here, go ahead. Two ships are on the way to the location you've given us, Commander. A patrol ship to bring you and the cadet to Jupiter City, and a space tug to get the damaged ship out of the space lanes. Good. Be sure to inform all personnel not to reveal information as to who was in this ship. Yes, sir. Oh, Commander, we've heard from Gold Star Express Spaceport on route number three. Yes? Mr. Scranner says the Terra 5 has been repaired that they're waiting for their instructions. Send Scranner this message. You will be informed when Space Patrol personnel will arrive to remove Terra 5. Your cooperation appreciated. I have it, sir. Uh, do I put your signature on it, sir? No, keep my name out of it. Your commanding officer will sign it. I'll take it to Colonel Harris immediately, Commander. Thank you. Hurry out. Are you going to let somebody else bring our ship back to Jupiter City, Commander? No. You and I will go back to room number three when we finish our business on Jupiter. For the time being, I don't want anyone outside of the Men are loading the Amplitron cases into that Class C cargo ship, Mr. Scranner. You ought to be ready to blast off in an hour. Good. Heard anything about your ship or Corey? I received a spacegram saying that Space Patrol personnel would pick up the Terra 5. It was signed by Colonel Harris of Jupiter Space Patrol. Hmm. If it's just a routine pickup of the ship, why would the Colonel be involved? Exactly. Now, why wouldn't Corey's name be on the message? Obviously, because there's no longer a Commander Corey. I've seen it happen before, Lloyd. This is the kind of official smoke screen that always goes up before some important announcement. Private cruiser SX-42 calling Gold Star Express Space Port on Jupiter Moon Number 3. That's Rackman. I know what he wants. But remember, you don't know anything about me except that I blasted off some time ago. Private cruiser SX-42 calling Gold Star Express Space Port Jupiter Number 3. Gold Star Express Jupiter Number 3. Go ahead, cruiser S-642. I would like to speak to the person in charge. Well, that'd be Mr. Scranner, but he isn't here now. I know that. But who is in charge in Mr. Scranner's absence? Why, uh, I guess I would be Bart Loring. Oh, Loring. Yeah, sure. Well, this is Slate Rackman. Yes, Mr. Rackman. Well, you probably know I had an arrangement with Mr. Scranner. Well, yes, he mentioned it. I'm sure he did. However, since Mr. Scranner isn't coming back... That puts you in charge of Gold Star Express. I, uh, don't understand. What do you mean Mr. Scranner isn't coming back? Well, he made the mistake of double-crossing me on that Saturn Amphitron deal. I have just blasted his spaceship apart. Now, I want to land at your port and talk to you. Oh, what about? My share of the Amphitron. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, don't be a fool, Laurie. Now that Scranner is gone, come in with me. If you don't, I'll send a cosmic torpedo into your atmosphere shell and destroy every one of you. Well, what do you say? All right, so let me make a deal, Axe. What do you mean, Axe? You heard what he said. Mr. Rackman. Yeah, Lord. Uh, I'll be glad to discuss your proposition. Good. And in case you plan anything clever. One of my men in another spaceship has instructions to blast your atmosphere shell dome. If I'm not spaceborne in 30 minutes. Just come in, Mr. Rackman. I'm sure we can reach you. Come in, Mr. Rackman. Well, I'm glad to see you're a man of sense, Laurie. Far more sensible than Scranner. Now, 
Let's get down to cases. Where is the Amplitron? It's being loaded into a ship, Blackman. It's Kenner, I... You thought you left me to die in my ship, eh? Uh, but uh, who was in it? And the Corey of the Space Patrol? Me. Hey, he did say it was Corey on the space phone. You thought it was a trick. Of course, you were so anxious to do away with me. Well, I... Uh, actually, I... Uh, I'm glad it was for you. Now you and I can operate without much fear of being caught. Now, look here. Here's my proposition. Let it, Rackman. I don't need you anymore. But I can give you a small job in my outfit. In an advisory capacity. Me? Work for you? Why, you're nothing but a space mechanic and a small time on it, Dad. You got your choice, Rackman. Come in with me and keep quiet. I'll tell the space patrol who blasted my ship and deployed Commander Corey. Huh? Which is it? All right, Scranton. I'll come in with you. I hope you appreciate how big-hearted I am. Yeah, sure, sure. Space Patrol Cruiser J-83 calling Gold Star Spaceport, Jupiter Moon Number 3. I'll handle it. You keep quiet. Gold Star Spaceport to Space Patrol. Go ahead. I'm acting on instructions of Colonel Harris at Jupiter Space Patrol headquarters. I'm bringing in the pilot who will fly Commander Corey's space battle cruiser back to Jupiter. Do I have permission to enter your atmosphere, Shell? Uh, of course. The Terra 5's all ready. Good. Space lock will be ready at your approach. Thank you. Space Patrol Cruiser J-83 out. Yeah. Well, Rackman, it looks as though you did a good job. You're sending someone after Corey's ship. Uh, you must have finished him all right, Rackman. You hear that, pilot? He said he was acting on orders of Colonel Harris. Yeah, what about my ship out there on the port? I'll assign a few men to work on it. It'll look just as though it's in for repairs. Until Corey's ship blasts off, Rackman, you keep on. Got the velocity, Happy. There's the Gold Star spaceport drone. Uh, Commander, are you going to ask Scranner why Rackman would want to blast his ship to pieces? First, we're going to find out just who Rackman is. Jupiter City headquarters didn't have anything on him at all. Maybe a personal feud. Uh oh. What is it, sir? Ship down there inside the atmosphere dome. Private cruiser number S six four two. Rackman's ship. Yes. Yeah, but if he if he wrecked Scranner's ship and thought he did away with Scranner, what's he doing here at Scranner's spaceport? An interesting question, Happy. Let's find the answer. Come in. Well, gentlemen, is the ship? And a cork. Yes, Brenner. Why the surprise? Well, hey, uh, didn't you expect me to come back to my ship? Well, uh, yes, yes, except that you didn't identify yourself when you called in for landing procedure. Well, where is Rackman? Rack? He's Rack, the man who brought in that private cruiser out there near the east hangar. Uh, that ship was merely brought in for repairs, Commander. Strange. It seemed to be in good condition when it was blasting cosmic torpedoes at your ship. I don't understand. Look, Scranner, somebody blew your ship to pieces thinking you were in it. Someone named Rackman. Now his ship is here in your spaceport. How do you explain it? What is there to explain? Quit stalling, Scranner. Cadet Happy and I saw some men loading a cargo ship, hauling crates out of an underground storage vault. The crates look very much like the type in which Amplitron is packed. How about it? I think it's about time someone took over who can handle things. Don't move, Corey. I suppose you're Rackman. That's right. Corey, move in and get the commander's weapon and the cadet. Go ahead. I got them covered. Sure, Mr. Rackman. I see I wasn't thorough enough when you were in Scranner's ship. But that's a mistake I can easily correct right now. Hurry up, Loring. Take a commander's ray gun. Hand me your ray gun, Commander. All right, Loring. Here it is. Get Scranner happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're a fool, Corey. You're two against three. Not now. <laughs> That evens it up, Commander. Oh, watch Loring. Hello, Loring. Oh. All right, Strenner. Want some more? Wait. Wait. Commander, please. Had enough? Yeah. Yeah, you, you've got to revive Rackman. Hurry or we'll all be destroyed. Oh, fine. He told me if he wasn't out of this atmosphere shell in half an hour, his men had blast a cosmic torpedo in us. We've only got five minutes. Oh. Bring him, too. Let him tell us men he's all right. Come on, Strenner. No matter, I mean it. A torpedo through this shell would destroy us all. Forget it, Scranner. I don't think Rackman's men are worried about him right now. Look out there, above the dome. Space? 
Dozens of them. I took the precaution of making a space phone call when I was inspecting Terra 5. You're safe, Skrenner. Yeah, Skrenner. Where you're going, you'll be safe for a long, long time. We'll return in just a moment with a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Gang, there's not much time. What do you mean, Captain Tufel? No, sorry, there's not much time. Hey, Captain, not much time for what? To get a projectoscope. This offer will soon end. You had me scared. I already got my projectoscope. Ah, lucky you, but say, gang, how about you? Have you sent for your projectoscope yet? You better send for it today. It's a signal light, flashlight, and film projector, all in one. And it's shaped like Buzz Corey's rocket ship, bright blue and yellow plastic, and a full six inches long. What a signal light. Wait till you see how fast it blinks on and off. Golly. What a flashlight. Wait till you see the swell beam of light it throws. And what a film projector. Wait till you see the wonderful pictures it shows on the wall. Gang, it comes with a strip of film containing Buzz, Corey, and Cadet Happy in four Space Patrol adventures. Mighty Meteor, Space Pirates, Men from Mars, and Robot Invasion. Slip the film in your projectoscope, darken the room, push the radar antenna, and a picture flashes on the wall. To show a whole adventure, you just slide the film from picture to picture. But remember, the projectoscope offer soon ends. So send in for your projectoscope today. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in a surface car driving through the Venus Mountains toward the Space Patrol testing grounds. As they speed over the dangerous road, they're unaware that a container of sleeping gas hidden in the car is expelling a dangerous vapor. Wow, I've seen these cliffs from the air, but I never realized how high they really are. Oh. From this road, it's a thousand foot drop to the bottom of the gorge. Hey, Commander, you sure you don't want me to drive it? If you get sleepy, you would think it goes off. Hey, Commander. Hmm? Look out, we're headed for the edge of the cliff. Hey, Commander, wake up. We're going over. He's sure to be with us next week for the exciting adventure, The Immortal Brain, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Columbus, Ohio, Wilkes-Barre, and Scranton, Pennsylvania. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! <laughs> space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. <laughs> Other players were Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, and David Duval. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> and be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for...